Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Coming to you from the great Pacific Northwest. We truly serve an awesome God. Uh, it's going to be a beautiful day outside, or so I'm told. And we certainly praise God for the, these good days. Uh, what a beautiful place to live. Thank you, God. Our word of encouragement comes from John chapter 21, starting at verse 25. Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. Now, I don't know about you, but oftentimes when I think of the ministry of Jesus, and we understand it lasted about three years from the time that he you know, turned the water into wine at the wedding until the time that he's you know, uh, crucified and rises again and then you know, uh, spends time with the disciples and eventually ascends to heaven, is about three years. Um, and as we read through the Gospels, uh, and we know Matthew, Mark, and Luke uh, have a lot of the same stories, they're called the Synoptic Gospels, um, but as we read through those, I, I think that we see lots of things that Jesus did. In fact, I think, uh, at least for me, I, I think that Jesus did a ton of stuff. And yet, John here in his writing, in, in his last verse, says, Hey, by the way, after all these things I've written down, after all these things I've shared with you, there is a ton more. In fact, so much more that the world would probably not be big enough for if we captured all that Jesus did. You know, as I think of that, I think of how wonderfully gracious Jesus was. I think of how his love for us is more than we could ever know. And, and even those words seem like they would not really be true, that maybe it was an over-exaggeration, except for the fact that we know that Jesus was God, that he was God in human form. And we know that God is all about loving us. God is all about restoring us to himself, and not just as a collective whole, but individually. And so when I hear these words about, hey, you know, if we wrote down everything Jesus did while he's here, the world would not be able to hold the books. But at the same time, if we tried to understand all that God does every day, the world could not contain it. If we tried to write down all that God does for each individual every day, <clears throat> uh, we could not contain it. The truth is, as much as God does for us, we probably couldn't contain it in one book just for our own life. We serve this awesome God who is in love with us, who wants what's best for us, who day after day after day wants to be in relationship with us. Uh, and not just a part-time relationship, but a full-time relationship. God wants us to depend upon him. God wants us to seek him. And, and when we think that things are trivial, they're not trivial to God. Why? Because God loves us. God cares about the things we care about. Now, we won't stretch it out and try to say that, hey, I like the Seahawks and someone else likes uh, another team, uh, let's say the 49ers, uh, that used to be a rivalry in, in, in my last church, um, the night, a good rivalry that we had. We're not going to say that God chooses one team over another. Don't get me wrong. But when we care about stuff, God cares about it. And when things are affecting us, God cares about it. And God provides and God helps. And even though sometimes things are hard, God is still there. In fact, God promises never to leave us nor forsake us for those of us that know him and are serving him. You know, one thing I love about the entire Bible is that to me it paints this beautiful picture of who God is and how God does walk beside people, how God does walk beside his creation, how God has a plan, how God is always there. And even in the times when the people of Israel were disobedient or uh, other people in the New Testament were disobedient or even when we're disobedient today, it's not as if God has completely turned his back. God is still calling up. God is still saying, come home to me. God is still working in ways to draw us back to himself and to restore his people individually to himself. That's because God loves us so much. We can't begin to fathom God's love for us. We know as human beings that we probably would have given up on ourselves a long time ago. But God never gives up. God always holds on, even though he knows the outcome, even though he knows our final choices, he's always drawing us back to himself. Therefore, on Judgment Day, God knows our hearts. He knows what we decide. It's not about him, uh, you know, sending us to hell uh, or sending us or bringing us into his kingdom as much as he's judging our hearts. What did we want? Who do we want to be with? Are we in relationship with him? Are we wanting to be his children in his kingdom? Today, I want to encourage you, be a children of God's kingdom. Don't worry about all the extra things. I know there's things on our plates. I know there's things that, they are, that are worth worrying about. But let's put them in God's hands. Let's trust that he's really in charge. Let's bring before him the requests of our heart and let him answer them according to his will, his good and perfect will. You see, when we do those things, then we can find his joy and his peace and his happiness in the midst of our lives. Praise God for that. Father God, thank you for this day. 
Thank you for a beautiful day here where I'm at. May it be beautiful where those who see this are at. Father, we just pray today that your hand would be upon all that we do. We pray, Lord, that you that we would see your hand at work as we minister to other people, as we meet other people in our work or at their store or uh, wherever we may go. Father, may you use us, may your light shine through us, may your love engulf us in such a way that it flows onto other people, and may we become less as you become more. Father, may your joy fill us in such a way that people want to know Jesus. Father, thank you for all that you're about to do. Father, we also pray today for those who are hurting, for the many out there who are still suffering from the COVID-19 virus. Um, Father, those in hospitals and those who uh, may not recover, Father, would you just bless them and be, draw them near to you and be with their families? Father, be with those who are facing cancer or other diseases. Father, would you bless and heal those as you see fit and be with those, Lord, who are struggling. Blessing those, Lord, who have other ailments going on. Maybe there's just colds or flus or, or seasonal allergies or whatever it is. Father, would you help people to have a good day today? Would you just bless their bodies? Father, bless those, too, who are struggling with mental illness. So many, Lord, in our country just they need something that we can't offer, that need greater help than I can offer. But Lord, you can heal all things. Heal their minds today. Father, free those who are stuck in addiction. Help those, Lord, who are struggling in their walk of faith. And those who don't know you at all, may they come, may they have a divine meeting with you today. Father, thank you for all that you're about to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, there you have it. God loves you. God loves the people around you. Even if they seem unlovable, God still loves them. Let's love them today. Let's pray that God will touch them through our lives. And let's have a wonderful day in the Lord. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow.